In this video, we're going to take a look at the brand new sequencer on the Launchpad Pro. The Launchpad Pro contains a four track sequencer, which can be used to control software and hardware. Let's start off with the fundamentals. In the steps view, you have a blue 32 step sequencer at the top of the grid and a play area in the bottom half of the grid. Depending on what you want to sequence, you can choose between viewing a drum layout, a scaled keyboard layout, or a chromatic keyboard layout in the play area to input notes. To switch between these layouts, hold down Shift and press Sequencer to enter the sequencer's settings. Choose from the three layouts using these three yellow pads, and you'll get a preview of the selected layout on the left. There's drum mode, scaled keyboard, and chromatic keyboard. Press sequencer again to exit the settings. To input notes into the sequencer, you can hold down one or more notes that you want to sequence, and then press the step on the sequencer that you want to assign that note or notes to. You can then press play, and you'll see the white playhead run through the steps. You're also able to record live into the sequencer by pressing record and then pressing the play button. You'll notice that when I hit play, the playhead turns red and any notes that you play in the play area will be captured into the sequencer. I mentioned that this is a four track sequencer you can switch between the four tracks using the four illuminated track select buttons. Each track sends out note data on its own MIDI channel. By default, track one sends out on MIDI channel one, track two sends out on MIDI channel two, and so on. This can be changed in the sequences settings by selecting the track using the track select buttons and using the corresponding colored pad to select a MIDI channel from one to eight on the top row and nine to 16 on the bottom row. Be aware of this if you're sequencing multiple MIDI channels into your DAW or on hardware. To set the gate length for each of the steps in the sequencer, hold down a step that contains at least one note and the pad will turn green. Use the following pads to determine the gate length for the notes on this step. Now let's look at how you can begin to build tracks using pattern chains and scenes. In the patterns view, you can access eight individual patterns per track. And as we saw on the steps page, each of these patterns is 32 steps long. Patterns can be chained together by pressing two patterns simultaneously. These two presses will define the start and end point for the chain. Then when you press play, the patterns will play one after the other. The pattern that's currently playing will pulse. Scenes allow you to trigger multiple patterns for all tracks with a single press. This is great for building up a longer song structure. Scenes are represented by the 16 white pads at the bottom of this patterns view. Hold a scene to preview which patterns are assigned to it. After a short delay, the assigned patterns, or pattern chains, will light up red. To assign a pattern to the scene, press a pattern, or a pattern chain, while holding down the scene button. While the sequencer is playing, you can press on a pattern or a scene to cue it, and it will start at the end of the current bar, keeping everything in time for you. You can also chain multiple scenes together by pressing two scenes at the same time. These two presses will define the start and end point of your chain. Then when you press play, the scenes will play one after the other. If you're using Ableton Live, 
the print to clip function will print the content of the currently selected sequencer track into an Ableton Live MIDI clip. If you want to select which empty clip slot you'd like the MIDI clip to be printed into in Ableton Live, press Session and then hold Shift and select the empty clip slot that you'd like the clip to be printed into and then return to the sequencer and press Print to Clip. Scene launch buttons 3 to 7 on the right side of the launch pad allow you to access the stated functions on the 5th and 6th rows of the launch pad. For example, you can select velocity and then select a step on the sequencer. Now you can set the velocity for the notes on this step with one lip pad representing minimum velocity and 16 lip pads representing maximum velocity. Now let's look at how you can get creative in the sequencer and add some randomness into your patterns. Probability is an extremely powerful tool that keeps your sequences evolving and moving. Using the probability function, you're able to determine how likely it is that the notes on each step will actually be triggered. Press probability and the probability value for the chosen step will be displayed on a one row slider like so. With all eight pads lit, the notes on this step will definitely be triggered because the probability value is 100%. However, with just one pad lit, there's only a 12.5% probability that the notes on this step will actually be triggered. You can see the list of probability values in the user guide, but to summarize, the more pads that are lit, the more chance that the note or notes on that step will be triggered. Mutation is another powerful tool to add a further element of randomness to your sequences. Applying mutation to a step adds the chance that the pitch of that step will be altered when it plays back. Press mutation on the right of the launch pad and the mutation value for the chosen step will be displayed on the slider. There are eight values for mutation with the minimum value, i.e. no mutation, being on the far left, and the maximum value, or the most mutation, being on the far right. By default, any notes that you record or sequence will have no mutation applied and will have 100% probability applied, so they will definitely trigger and they'll definitely play at the correct pitch until you come in and adjust these settings yourself. Micro steps allow for increased resolution for note placement on the grid. This is great for creating strumming effects or quickly re-triggering a single note for hi-hat rolls, for example. Press micro steps to edit the assignment of notes. The six leftmost pads on the top row of the play area represent the micro steps for the chosen step. This essentially gives us access to six micro steps inside one sequencer step. Hold down a note in the play area and then tap on a micro step to assign that note to that micro step. If you want to remove that note from the micro steps, hold down the note in the play area and press on the micro step again to delete it. Pattern settings allow you to alter the way that steps are being played back within the patterns. The eight sand-colored pads control the sync rate of the pattern. The default setting is 1 16th, where each note corresponds to a 16th note. The sync rate increases as you move to the right and decreases as you move to the left. You can see a full list of the available sync rates in the user guide. The four pink pads control the pattern playback direction. With pad one selected, the pattern will play forwards as normal. With pad two selected, the pattern will play in reverse order. With pad three selected, the pattern plays in ping pong mode, which alternates between forwards and backwards. and pad four plays the pattern in a totally random order.
can get some really interesting results using probability, mutation, and random pattern playback order. The start and end point of patterns can also be changed within the pattern settings. This is great if you want to create polyrhythms really quickly and easily. Pressing on a step will set the end point of the current pattern. And you can hold down shift and press a pad to set the start point of the current pattern. Steps that have notes assigned to them, but fall outside of the selected start and end points, are displayed in a dim red, while unassigned steps stay unlit. Now let's cover the last few key functions of the sequencer. You're able to continue the sequence from wherever playback was last stopped. To do this, hold down shift, and you'll see that the play button is lit up in a sand color. Press to continue, and this pad will now turn off because continue is not available during playback. The up and down arrows on the left hand side change the octave of the notes in the play area. The left and right arrows, which are presented in the drum mode, transpose the notes up or down by four semitones. In other words, shifting the drums up or down a row. You also have access to the clear function, which you can use to clear steps, patterns, and scenes. Hold down clear and tap on a step, pattern, or scene to clear it. You also have access to the duplicate function. To duplicate a step, hold down the duplicate function, press on a step with a note or notes assigned to it, and then press on the step that you want to copy those notes to. You can also duplicate patterns and scenes in this way. You're able to save all of the content in your sequencer, as well as your selected scale, in the projects view. You have 64 project slots to save to on the Launchpad Pro, and you can back up your projects using Novation components. To save, go to the Projects view, select an empty project slot which is indicated by the dimly lit green pads, hold Shift and press the Projects button once, and then confirm the save by pressing the button again. The project slot that you save to will now flash on the grid momentarily. Project slots which contain a saved project will be more brightly lit. You can also save projects from the steps view or the patterns view in the same way. If you'd like to view more in-depth Launchpad Pro tutorials, you can do so using the button below. If you've got everything that you need to get up and running with your Launchpad, then that's great. Let us know and we'll show you the next steps.